welcome to the course on design of power electronic converters. We were discussing the module of magnetics design and we had seen how to do inductive design. Now today I will give you a brief on transformer design. To design transformers again I will show you the area product method. More or less the method is same but there are some small differences. So let us uh, look into the equations for area product method. So let us say if we have a transformer and on the primary side the voltage is uh, V1 and on the secondary side the voltage is uh, V2 and the current over here is I1 and on the secondary side it is I2 and this transformer is going to be made uh, using a core and winding the primary and secondary windings on this core and again we have this window area and the cross sectional area of the core. So, both of these two multiplied will be the area product. So, we have to find out this area product. Now, so for uh, this uh, voltage primary side voltage you know that we can write V1 as equal to N1 d phi by dt and d phi is the change in flux can be written as multiplication of the change in magnetic flux density multiplied by the cross sectional area of the core and dt is the change in time. Now, we will write it as the switching frequency T s multiplied by a factor 1 by k f. So, this could also be then written as 1 by f s where f s is the switching frequency multiplied by k f. Now, this k f this is called as the waveform factor and it depends on the nature of the waveform. For sinusoidal waveforms, your Kf is given as equal to 2 pi by root 2 which is equal to 4.44 and for square waveforms kf equal to 4 and if we have a rectangular waveform which is the case uh, in power electronics so, and that has got a duty ratio d. So, then k f is also given as equal to 2 by root over of d 1 minus of d where d is your duty ratio. So, then we can uh, write n 1 if we substitute for d phi and d t then we can write n 1 as equal to v 1 by k f f s b p k the peak of flux density multiplied by the cross sectional area of the core. And uh, similarly we can write n 2 as equal to v 2 by k f f s b p k into a c. And if we have let us say an M winding transformer, so in that case your N n could be written as equal to V n by K f f s B p k a c where n is uh, equal to 1 to m. 
Now further we can write the cross sectional area of the conductor. So, A w 1 is the cross sectional area of the conductor. This can be written as I 1 R m s by your J 1 R m s and uh, similarly we can also write the cross sectional area of conductor 2 that is winding to the secondary winding which will be written as I 2 R m s by J 2 R m s. And if you want to write a general expression for nth winding for an m winding transformer it will be A w n will be equal to I n R m s by J n R m s. Now, usually we will take the current density to be same for all of them. So, J 1 R m s equal to J 2 R m s equal to J n R m s and we can call it as J R m s. So, in general then this expression will become A w n equal to I n R m s by J R m s. So, the total cross sectional area or we can say that the copper total copper cross sectional area area of all turns this will be given as if we call it as a copper which is equal to k u multiplied by w a. So, w a is, is the winding area and k u is the winding utilization the window utilization factor which we have seen before. So, this will be equal to n 1 a w 1 plus n 2 a w 2 for a 2 winding transformer. This then can be further written as if we substitute for a w 1 and a w 2 i 1 r m s by j r m s plus n 2 i 2 r m s by j r m s. Now, further we can substitute for n 1 and n 2. So, this will become v 1 i 1 r m s by k f f s a c b p k j r m s plus v 2 i 2 r m s by k f f s a c b p k j r m s. So, then this can be then written as equal to 1 by k f f s a c b p k j r m s and the sum of v 1 i 1 r m s plus v 2 i 2 r m s. So, from here what it implies is that that uh, if we take this a c on the left hand side. So, area product a p is equal to a c multiplied by w a which will be given as 1 by k u k f b p k j r m s into f s sum of v 1 i 1 r m s plus v 2 i 2 r m s. So, this is what is it for a 2 winding transformer. So, for m winding transformer we can write a p as equal to 1 by k u k f f s b p k j r m s summation of v n i n r m s 
where n goes from 1 to m. So, this is the equation for area product and this equation is what you can use to calculate the area product for the core that you need and once you have calculated the area product then the procedure becomes the same as we have seen for your inductor design. You go to manufacturer's data sheet, you choose a core which has got a similar area product and uh, then you get all the core dimensions and other uh, terms related to the core, the properties for that core, you obtain those values and uh, then further using that you can uh, do the design of the magnetics. So, uh, let me brief you on the transformer design uh, steps. Now, here uh, I am showing uh, you for uh, by giving this example of uh, this converter which requires uh, this transformer. Now, this is a 3 winding transformer and this is a forward converter. Now, this converter we have not discussed in this course, uh, uh, you might have studied it before. Uh, but uh, this is just uh, uh, being used to uh, help you understand the transformer design procedure. Now, uh, in this converter, uh, what happens is that when you turn on this switch, then uh, this, this gets shorted and the voltage is applied across V1. So, uh, V1 equals to V in when the switch is on. And uh, then um, at that time uh, this diode also conducts uh, when this switch is on and uh, so your voltage uh, here becomes as equal to N2 by N1 into V in. And further this side operation is similar to a buck converter. See if you replace this part with the switch over here then you can see that this becomes your familiar buck converter. So, forward converter is actually an isolated buck converter. So, since it is isolated it has got the transformer inside it. So, you, you can um, I mean not necessarily uh, your ratios are limited as in your buck converter. It depends on your transformer ratio also the input to output voltage transfer ratio uh, um, that means your VO by V in it depends not only on the duty ratio of the switch, it also depends on the turns ratio of the transformer. So, um, here uh, then uh, when the switch is off, your uh, uh, this uh, then also turns off at that time whatever uh, because of the leakage inductance uh, your whatever uh, flux was developed in it, it needs a path and so this uh, diode gets forward biased at that time and through this tertiary winding then uh, the flow of the flux is whatever was the flow of the flux because of uh, your leakage inductance that is maintained. Now, so to design this transformer what uh, you will be needing is you have to know the transformer voltages all the transformer voltages V1, V2, V3 and then the transformer currents and that by analyzing this uh, you will be able to know that. Further what you need is the switching frequency Fs of the MOSFET and uh, the duty ratio D and then further what you need is you have to assume the values of current density and uh, the operating flux density Bm. Now, these two actually remain the same, um, uh, the, I mean you have to assume it here as well as uh, we had done it while doing inductor design. So, inductor design also you had to know some values before, I mean some specifications are given and based on it then you design it and here also in transformer design it remains the same. There are some specifications and these are those specifications that which you have to note down first before designing the transformer. Then you select the core material and I have told you before how you select the core material. Then uh, you have to know the window utilization factor Ku 
Now, 0.4 is a good value to begin with as the window utilization factor and uh, the temperature rise delta T, what is the allowed rise in temperature? Then further what is uh, done is that uh, the steps of design is first you calculate the area product and we have seen the equation of what is the area product equation. So, let us go back and look into it. So, area product equation Ku is something you have assumed, Kf is the waveform factor depending on your power electronic circuit. Um, you will be knowing the nature of the waveform and then for that you can find out what should be the waveform factor. Then your switching frequency Fs that will be specified and BPK and JRMS is also something that you will be uh, knowing before you begin the design. And uh, of course, your uh, all the voltages of the transformer and the currents of the RMS values of the currents of the transformer, this is also you have to find out based on your power electronic circuits. So, once you know all these things, you can substitute here and you can find out the area product. So, once you know the area product AP value, then as I said before also you go to data sheets of different manufacturers and uh, you find out a core which is having a similar area product. Further you do the calculation of your cross sectional area of the conductors and uh, cross sectional area of conductors uh, uh, we have seen what is the equation A w equal to your I n R m s by your J r m s. Now, only thing is that in inductor design you had to do this calculation only one because there is to be only one conductor. But now in transformer you may have multiple windings and so you will have to do it several times depending on your uh, number of windings means your uh, how many winding transformer it is. So, those many cross sectional areas you have to find out and they will be different for different different windings. Then further you go to the wire table and find out the gauge of the wires that you need for each of the windings. So, you select the gauge of the conductors for different windings. Then further you calculate the number of turns. Now, how do you calculate the number of turns? This equation also we just saw here. So, n n you can for nth winding will be given as so v n by Kf, Fs, Bpk, Ac. So, now once you have uh, chosen the core, you know the cross sectional area of the core. So, Ac value will be known to you and other things will be already known to you from before. So, you can calculate the number of turns and this also number of turns you have to do it multiple times depending on the number of windings of your transformer. Then uh, I had uh, shown you before how to calculate losses. So, you can do the loss calculation also first you can calculate the core loss and then you can calculate the copper loss. Again this copper loss now has to be done several times because you may be having multiple windings. For inductor design I had shown you copper loss only for one winding. Now, since now you have more windings you will be doing it different times and you have to be careful about using the value of resistance per unit distance because that may be different for different gauge of wires. And uh, further you can use the equations that were shown to you before to calculate the temperature rise. So, these steps are more or less similar to the inductor design steps you for your area product method. So, the key points of uh, this lecture are that, uh, that uh, we have discussed area product method and this is a very well known method and widely used method for magnetics design. Further uh, for transformer design uh, you have to know the waveform factor. Now, we have not really discussed in great detail how do you find out a waveform factor, um, but um, in textbooks and uh, in different uh, application nodes you should be able to find out your waveform factor for your particular converter that you will be using the nature of the waveforms that will be there. And uh, as we saw most of the steps for transformer design and inductor design are similar uh, with the very small differences and so you have to be 
noting down and be careful about those differences while you do the transformer design. Thank you.